In this episode, we'll be talking about Laravel controllers, and controllers are where the main logic for our application is going to live. So we have our models that interact with our database, we have our views that output the data to the screen, and then we have our controllers, which is where typically most of our logic for our application will live. So let's go ahead and jump into our project, and let's go to our routesweb.php, and you can see that a lot of logic is happening here, and we usually don't want a lot of logic happening inside of our routesweb.php file. So as you can see here, we have a route closure, which is where we create a route and pass it a function. Instead, let's say that we wanted to map this to a controller. So let's say that we wanted to map it to a customer controller and a customer method. So since we have specified that, we will then need to create our controller. So we can do that with PHP Artisan, make controller, and let's call this customer controller. And let's go ahead and run the server again. And then if we go into our app, HTTP, controllers, we now have a new file called customer controller. And inside of here is where we can specify that method. So we'll say public function customer. And then we can go ahead and print out the logic inside of this function. So let me go ahead and format this. And then what we will need to do is we will need to make sure that we have passed it an ID because we do pass the ID through the URL. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see what we're dealing with here. So if we go to localhost 8000 slash customer slash ID, then we are getting that we cannot find app slash customer. And that's because we are not inside of the app namespace. So we need to specify that we want to use app slash customer. And then we don't need the app slash customer here. And we can save this and reload again. And sure enough, you can see now that we get printed out the customer name Tony and the orders that are associated with that user. But we may want to clean this up even more because we don't want to output all this data to the screen. Instead, we probably want to return a view and let's just call this customer. So then if I go to my resources, my views, then I may want to create a new file. And I'll go ahead and just save this as customer.blade. .php. And let's create a default HTML structure. And we'll just give this a title of customer details. And let's go ahead and print this out to the screen here. So let me save that. Let me reload. And we are getting class customer not found. So let's go ahead and see what we're dealing with here. And we actually need to copy this back into our customer controller because we don't want to handle getting data from the model. Typically, we want to work from the model and the controller. So we want to get the customer, and then we want to pass it to our view. So we'll say array, say customer is equal to the customer object. So let's save that, let's reload, and sure enough, we have the exact same output. And just as a shorthand, instead of passing an array, if we only have, say, specific objects, we can actually just pass it to the view using the compact function. So we can say compact, and it will look for a variable named customer and just pass that as an array element. So if we save this and reload, then sure enough, we get the same output. So you can pass an array if you want to, or you can pass the compact function with the name of the variable. So then let's go ahead and go back into customer.blade.php, and let's clean this up even a bit more. Let's say that we want to have an h1 tag here, and we want to print out the customer name. So you can see if I'm using blade syntax, it looks quite a bit cleaner. Instead of opening up these echo tags, we can simply just echo this out to the screen. And we can do the same thing for these UL elements. We actually don't need to have those inside of an echo. But we will need to use the blade syntax for our for each statement. So we'll say for each customer orders as order. And then down here we need to specify that we want to end the for each. And then here we want to create a list item and then print out the order name. So let's save that and let's go ahead and go back to our page and reload. And sure enough, we get the customer name and we get an output of all their orders. So you can see just how easy it is to specify a route that we want to map it to a 
controller and to a method and then inside of our customer controller we can then fetch the customer object and then pass it to a view and then inside of our view we can output the data. So this was just a quick video to show you the concept of using controllers and once you get a lot more organized it makes your application easier to work with where you can map a route to a controller and the controller can interact with data from a model and then it can pass it to a view. So I will talk to you in the next video where we will be talking about authentication. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this Laravel Basics video. Uh, Laravel is a really cool framework that allows us to build these really cool applications. And one of those applications that I have built is the Dev Dojo. So if you check out devdojo.com, it's a learning resource for all things web development, including Laravel. I've just added a new section which includes eBooks that you can download. And uh, it's just a whole bunch of resources for you to get better at web development. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I hope you go over to the devdojo.com and check it out.